Hey, good morning, everyone. Pastor Jacobson here with another morning devotion for your morning, your day, your afternoon, your evening, whatever applies to you. I'm glad you're able to join with us today. Uh, We're going into Matthew chapter 15 today. We're going to take probably two sessions on this one because there's two really big sections that we need to take into consideration. This first one has to do with the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. Talk a little bit about that in a second. And the second half has to do with this um, tremendous confession of the Canaanite woman who realizes the difference between the spirit of the law and the letter of the law and how it applies to her. So really, these two morning devotions really need to go together, but we need to take the time to separate them and explain them in different ways. So that's what we're going to be doing um, today. Now, tomorrow, it's going to be interesting because according to my schedule, I have a circuit meeting in Iowa. However, the circuit meeting is supposed to be in Spirit Lake. And Pastor Simonson, from what I'm hearing, has come down with COVID-19. I don't know any more about that other than somebody told me that yesterday. um, And I haven't confirmed it myself. So we want to still pray, make sure that uh, we uh, uh, care for him in prayer. But I don't know how that's going to affect tomorrow's morning devotions. So with that being said, plan on tuning in tomorrow at 9 I'll try to put an update if I'm if I have to cancel, uh, because if my guess is is if he's sick and we're at his church, we're not going to be holding it. So I guess stay tuned uh, because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, so anyway, that's kind of an update on that front. So let's go ahead and uh, open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 15. You can always follow along with me as I read. I know several people listen to this in the car, so please don't read while you drive. I've seen people do that, and it's a scary phenomena, so please don't do that. Hey, good morning, Tiffany and Leanne. Good morning, Grandma. Good morning, Shirley, Wanda, uh, Trisha, Charlie, Katie, Vicki, uh, Glenn. Good morning, uh, Shirley. Uh, it's Good morning, Connie. It's good to see you all. So Matthew chapter 15. This is, in some sense, it's kind of a hard-hitting uh, chapter from Jesus, but I think it really is uh, applicable, especially with everything that we've gone through. Um, now, remember back in the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, and then 6, and then 7, going into chapter 8, we covered that Sermon on the Mount. And we saw that, um, we saw, uh, Katie, you mentioned it, it was tough, it was hard, it was a lot of tough lessons. I think this plays off of that. And Jesus is going to do this time and time again because Jesus realizes that we easily fall back into our routines. Hey, good morning, Joanne. Um, We easily fall back into complacency of thought and action and and deed and all these things. And so there's a constant reminder. To put it another way, um, and the way I normally teach it, like if I'm a new member class with somebody or the like, and and when we get to the point of talking about church, um, I always mention that it's like God knows that our, our memory lasts for about seven days before it needs a reset, right? And so the purpose of church, yes, we probably have heard in some way, shape, or form the same message in a different way from different pastors throughout the years. But there is something psychological about us as humans, fallen humans in particular, that constantly wants to fall back into that sinful self. And one of the things that we are going to constantly try to do in that sinful self is justify ourselves. So let's see what Jesus has to say about that. So Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Hey, good morning, Sue and Levon. Here we are. Then the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. So there are commandments, by the way, in the Old Testament about when you need to wash, and it's all ceremonial. I'm pretty sure God wants us to be clean no matter what, but there's certain times when the Jews did actually have to wash to be um, sorry, I'm trying to say that word wash without saying wash. Okay, uh, there's times that we have to we have to do that in order to um, 
in order to, um, to be clean with God in the Old Testament. Now, Jesus is going to change that all. We get baptism, and we're baptized into him, and he, and he fulfills the law for us. But the question the Pharisees bring up is, why don't you do the traditions of the elders? Uh, washing before eating in particular. And I'm not talking like what you and I might do when we go, you know, wash your hands with soap. It's just pouring water over your feet in particular and your hands. And this is supposed to make you clean to eat the meal. This is what the elders ask them to do. And then Jesus responds this way. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? Okay, now they're going to start getting put back on the defensive. For God commanded, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, this people honors me with their lips. You know, we talk about lip service. This is, this is where it comes from. But their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Okay, so what's happened here? They are taking this idea of ceremonial washing before a meal and taking it to make it a commandment of God. They've taken something that man has put down and making it a commandment of God. When they've taken the commandments of God and turned it into the rituals of men. So basically, there are these rules and they are still established. You can read them in the Talmud and the like when you go through uh, the Jewish rabbinic sources. I looked up some of them. And basically, if you are going to give a portion of your income or estate to God, you don't need to use that to love and serve and honor your parents or neighbors or anybody else because it's given to God. So um, I, this is probably like in a similar fashion to maybe what you and I might do with the IRS. Okay, we're getting close to the end of tax season. I know we're at the beginning now, but if we are getting close to the end, we want to make those last charitable contributions so we don't have to pay it later. It's kind of the same idea, but in a more intimate way. And um, what Jesus is saying is this is clearly breaking the fourth commandment. The letter of the law is to honor your father and mother, and there's no way in or out of that. And this gets kind of complicated, I know, with some family dynamics. But there's the command, right? So you keep trying to get out of doing that, but you love to keep these easy things. So let's keep going here, and we're going to talk about that in a second. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Then the disciple came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when, when they heard this saying? I love this. I love this. The disciples are worried about being offensive here when it comes to the word of God. Maybe we do the same thing nowadays. Uh, I laugh because I think we, we see it happen today as well in churches all over. We're afraid of offending with the word of God, with the commands that God gives us, uh, and so we don't say anything. And so uh, the disciples come to Jesus and say, hey, do you know you offended them? And Jesus has to be sitting there saying, am I wrong, right? Right? He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, explain the parable to us. And he said, are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth uh, pout, passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. 
Now, by the way, nobody tell my kids this because then they'll never wash their hands before the meal. But the idea is people are constantly trying to take these rules of God, the commandments, and fit them in ways that they can keep them or in ways that make them seem super holy, right? Oh, I'm washing my hands and so now I am clean for this food that God gives me, right? That's kind of the the super nice spiritual understanding of it. And Jesus is, says, and Jesus says, okay, baloney, what does this have to do with anything? It's what comes from the heart. It's what you actually believe. So this goes back in again to the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. You can take honor your father and mother and say, okay, well, I am doing that. I am honoring them, but I also have to honor God. So I'm I'm doing these things over here without fully keeping that commandment, the full letter of the law, uh, or the full spirit of the law, I should say. Um, and so, you know, what, what does God actually expect? And Jesus also points out here that it's from the heart that these evil things come. And this is why I always cringe a little bit when people uh, talk about the heart. We're very, very spiritualized in this day and age by doing this. Uh, you just got to follow your heart. Believe in your heart. What does your heart tell you? Jesus is going to tell you what your heart tells you. Out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Jesus' words, not mine. So the problem with this is ultimately our heart wants to create ways for us to keep the law, or at least maybe we feel good about trying to keep the law, uh, but then also making excuses for the things that we do against it. This is kind of condemning to everyone myself, you, the whole world. And this is why the Pharisees really don't like it. And maybe if you have kind of a gut reaction against it, it's probably speaking to that sinful Adam of yourself and you're sitting there kind of like, Ugh, right? That's what's going on. Uh, this idea that, you know, follow your dreams, follow your heart, follow these, follow this inward stuff. Jesus is trying to point out to the fact that if you do that, you're going to end up like the Pharisees, always justifying your actions because you're doing what you want to do or what you think is right without actually seeing what God has said is right. Now, over here on this side, when we actually try to see what God has said is right, you're going to come up with another problem. You're going to come up with the problem where you realize that you're not doing any of it, at least to the full extent of the law, for the full spirit of the law. And thus you end up in kind of the cycle. Well, I can't do it, but I want to do this, but I can't do it, but I want to do this. You, you end up in kind of this circular cycle. Maybe you've been there. I know I have, right? And it's at this point when you realize then that you don't have any ability to save yourself by the works of your heart or anything else that Jesus' death and resurrection finally makes sense. That it wasn't about what you could do in the first place but it's what you believe that Jesus has done for you. This is going to now set us up for the second section that we're going to hopefully get into either tomorrow or Wednesday. Remember, I'm, I'm out on the fence right now on whether or not we're going to do our circuit meeting tomorrow. It's technically scheduled for tomorrow, but with Pastor Simonson being sick, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. So anyway, if we get into it tomorrow, it's going to make sense. Or if we get into Wednesday, it'll make sense. You just got to remember this lesson. That it's the, it's the human heart, our desires, our inward, curved inwardness of ourself that are going to produce the evil results that we see around us. Even if we do try to temper them with nice human laws and traditions. Okay, now one thing that we need to get um, out right now, because I know every now and then somebody brings this up, um, where they will say, well, pastor, what about human traditions in the church and the like? Jesus isn't saying that human traditions are useless, nor is he saying that there's not a time and place to use them. He's saying that we don't teach them as ways and commandments of God. 
So no, Jesus is not condemning your church's traditions that you've done forever and ever. If they get in the way of the law of God or if they have supplanted God's law, then yes, he is condemning them. But he's not condemning the fact that you've always had sunrise service at, I don't know, 6 a.m. or whatever the case may be. Or that you always use divine service setting two or what. He's not condemning those things. In fact, as humans, we have to have some sort of tradition ritual because that's just kind of how we are. We, that's, we kind of function off of those things. And I, the easiest point is you probably have some probably loose rituals for your morning and evening. Well, your alarm clock goes off, you get up, you use the restroom, you brush your teeth, you do your hair, you get dressed or, you know, whatever the order is, you probably have some sort of just routine that you go through. We're creatures of habit. So traditions, he's not condemning. The other thing that you should note is that Jesus never, ever, ever condemns the uh, traditions and practices of uh, just their normal synagogue worship. He never says, well, you guys should do it this way or you shouldn't do it this way. He's fine with how they're doing it. What he's not fine with is the fact that they're taking the traditions and saying, God said, right, through rabbi so-and-so. That's normally how they do it. So that's what Jesus is condemning. The idea of rituals or traditions are not a bad thing. And most rituals and traditions should be used to teach something. This is a big reason why I've done a lot what I've done with um, uh, children's messages and church and stuff is because sometimes we just forget, even as adults, uh, why things are the way they are. But everything that we do have in our service and traditions and the like are meant to teach. So I like to use them to actually do that, to teach. Um, otherwise, we're just doing them. So that's kind of an explanation of why I do that. Uh, so again, Jesus isn't, and he, again, he never condemns the traditions of the synagogue that they do the three readings or they sing this Psalm or they do this. He goes with all of it. He never has anything bad to say about that. He does have something bad to say when people are taking these spiritual ideas of man and making them the rule. And one of the ways that I think we do this nowadays, just kind of recapping this whole thing, is we try to take this idea of, well, just follow your heart, or what does your heart say, or, you know, how is God speaking to your heart is another way that sometimes we couch this language a little bit. Um, the thing is, is the heart is inclined towards evil. So really what we want to figure out is what has God put outside of our heart, outside of who we are, to inform and teach us, right? So where do we find truth? It's not inside, and I'll beat on this drum probably off and on throughout my ministry. The more we try to find truth from the inside, things are going to get rough. And I think we do see this, you know, kind of putting it out on the, our national stage right now. What we see a lot of on all sides of political parties and all sides of uh, different ideas for every uh, ruling in general is this is what I want. This is, this is uh, good for me. And uh, as long as we're constantly curved inward on ourselves like that, whether at the national, state, local level, we'll still we'll see a lot of the turmoil that we're having. Um. Because at the end of the day, everybody has different desires of their heart. And if you got millions of people, you have millions of different desires. Well, how do you, how do you work with all that? You can't. And that's why Jesus is pointing this out. Okay. So if you have questions or anything, go ahead and put those down below. Um, just a reminder for everybody, especially if you tuned in after some of my kind of brief announcements at the beginning. Tomorrow, we may or may not have morning devotions at nine uh, because I'm normally supposed to have our Iowa circuit meeting. However, I did hear from people yesterday um, at uh, Concordia Lutheran. I heard that Pastor Simonson has COVID-19. I haven't confirmed that yet myself, so I need to kind of figure out if that's true. We're supposed to be having our meeting at his church I'm assuming if it is true that he is sick, we are not going to be doing that. So 
that's kind of why I don't know if we're going to meet tomorrow at 9. If I do find out, I'll try to post it on Facebook for y'all. And uh, that way you'll know and you don't have to wait around for me at 9. If you don't hear anything, just assume that we're going to keep going like we normally do tomorrow at 9 a.m. So anyway, we do want to add Pastor Simonson regardless of what we know to prayer, just because other people have heard of it and talked about it and sent me messages. We should include him in prayer and then let's hope that maybe he doesn't have it. Maybe we misheard. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, I'll try to send a message or somebody a message today and figure it out. Um, still everybody else that we've had in our prayers in our prayers today. Um, so if you have some that you want to add, go ahead and add those below. Regardless of if we have morning devotions tomorrow or Wednesday, one of the things I am going to try to do this week is I'm actually going to try to do our morning devotions through our new camera and our new um, streaming box. And there's a reason for this. I'm hoping I can bypass downloading these morning devotions and stuff to my computer and uploading them back up to YouTube. If I can do that, then some of the memory issues and RAM issues that I'm running into are, are a little bit more null and void. If I can't do that, well, then I have something else to do. So that's going to be my experiment. Um, if you see me come live tomorrow or Wednesday and things look different, it's probably because I'm using that camera and that box. So don't worry about it. It's an experiment, and I'm going to try to figure out how it works. I might most likely will not be able to see your comments the day I do that, though. That's the downside. And that's why I do do these morning devotions off my phone and camera, because then I can see your comments and everything and say good morning. But if I'm not doing that tomorrow or Wednesday, that's the reason why. So no offense meant. I'm just trying to figure out if there's another way I can make something work, okay? All right. With that being said, I don't see any prayer requests or anything coming in. Um, today I'll be mostly around here at the office. It's pretty cold for a lot of the visits and stuff. So I'll be making some phone calls to people. I might drop in and check on a few people later in the afternoon. We'll have to see. Um, but stay warm, everybody. It is super cold out there. Um, it is what it is, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and pray. Father in heaven, we give thanks to you that you have revealed through your son, the way to salvation, which is not found in our hearts or our desires, our actions, or anything else that we could possibly come up with. Forgive us for the times when we feel that in some way, shape, or form, we can actually win or curry your favor with works and thoughts of our heart and turn us back to your son that we may live in the freedom that he has done it all for us already. Father, we pray this morning for those who do not know you, who are trying to earn and win your favor by their own works and ways and deeds, whether they know you or not, and help lead them back to the faith, which leads to life everlasting. Father, I also pray this day that you continue to be with those in need of our prayers, that you, with, that you continue to be with Tim and Jody and Roger, be with June as she travels through this veil of tears to yourself in heaven, and give her family peace. Father, we pray that you continue to be with the members of our armed forces and police forces, that you be with Roger and Kurt and Corey and Tyler, and also with their families as they support them and these very important duties. Help us to be a people at peace, both with one another and by faith with you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right. God bless everyone. Hope you have a great day. As always, if you need me, give me a call. I should be around most of the day. Maybe later this afternoon, I might be out and about, uh, depending on how cold I am and if my headache goes away, because this weather's playing with my head a little bit. So anyway, God bless. We will see you around, hopefully tomorrow. If not tomorrow, realize that it's because I got to figure things out, but for sure, Wednesday at 9.